dear students in the present class we analyze a different class of models known as dynamic econometric models now if you are working with the time series data as against the cross section data if uh, the regression model involves not only the current values of explanatory variables but also the lagged values of explanatory variables such models are known as distributed lag models such models are known as distributed lag models as an example suppose that we specify a model as alpha plus beta 0 xt plus beta 1 xt minus 1 plus etc etc beta k x t minus k plus ut this is an example of a distributed lag model because this regression model involves not only xt but also lagged values of xt t minus 1 t minus 2 etc t minus k such models are known as distributed lag models and we will explain why it is known as distributed lag models also if uh, the model contains lagged values of the dependent variable as an explanatory variable in addition to the usual explanatory variables it is an example of an auto regressive model for example if i specify yt as equal to alpha plus beta 0 xt plus beta 1 yt minus 1 plus ut as an example it is an example of an auto regressive model because in addition to xt a lagged value of the dependent variable is included as an explanatory variable and these models are generally known as dynamic econometric models auto regressive and distributed lag models are known as dynamic econometric models because the value of the dependent variable depends not only on the current values of explanatory variables but also on the lagged values of the explanatory variables of the dependent variable and we know that in economics whenever there is a change in the value of the independent variable the value of the dependent variable will not change immediately it will take time now the effect of a policy variable for example is compared to compared to guiding a ship the ship will not turn immediately when the uh, what to say when uh, the instruction is given in the form of changing the direction using the steering etc it will take some time the same is true in the case of most of the policies if a policy is adopted its impact will not be felt immediately why will adjust to a change in x with a lapse of time that lapse of time is known as lag the lapse of time is known as lag as an example to this now corona is 
spreading all over the world. Medi medical companies are struggling hard to develop a vaccine, but it will take time. Once uh, it will take time to develop a vaccine, many months are predicted. So, the, so there is corona devastating the world economies, but vaccine will reach the market only with a lapse of time. Or if there is an increase in the supply of money, an economic example, its impact will not be felt immediately in the form of an increase in prices. It will take time, it will take many time periods for the impact of an increase in the money supply to be felt all over the economy. Such a lapse of time is known as lag. And modeling the lag is very important. In the models we have discussed so far, we assumed that the models are static. Static in the sense that whenever x changes, y react immediately without any lapse of time. And this is what we adopt in static analysis and also comparative static analysis. As you know from your course in microeconomics or macroeconomics, there are three methods of analysis, static, comparative, static, dynamic. In the static and comparative static analysis, time is not considered seriously. In the static analysis, our attention is concentrated on analyzing equilibrium phenomena. In the comparative static analysis, we compare two equilibrium phenomena without considering the time required for moving from one equilibrium point to another equilibrium point. But in the dynamic analysis, we consider the movement of the economy from one equilibrium point to another equilibrium point. Now the question is, in the introductory books of microeconomics, macroeconomics, etc., we limit our analysis to static and comparative analysis, comparative static analysis because dynamic analysis is more complicated. But remember this, in economics, we have to make our models dynamic because it is very important in many situations. Demand depends on price, demand depends on previous price, quantity, previous quantity, etc. Consumption depends on previous quantity consumed. Inflation depends on money supply, previous values, and so many other. So dynamic analysis is very important in economics. As an example to the importance of dynamic analysis, and also dynamic analysis is very important for policy makers, for the government, for the firm. Government uh, adopts various policies to influence the economy, that is fiscal policy, monetary policy, etc. Suppose that the central bank of the country reduces the interest rates with uh, the objective of boosting the economy, encouraging investment, etc. But the question is how quickly entrepreneurs will respond. The, if they respond after so many time periods, the policy is not effective. So policy makers may want to know how quickly entrepreneurs will react to the incentive given in the form of a reduced interest rate. Similarly, the manager of a company may have to know how quickly consumers will respond if there is a change in the price of the commodity if there is a change in the design of the products, if there is a change in the, uh, what to say, if there is additional features added to the product, etc., etc. So, so, this is required. Dynamic analysis is required to understand how quickly economic agents will react to various policy changes. As a concrete example, Suppose that a person receives 
an annual increase in his salary equal to dollar 2000 a one time increase and this will be maintained in the subsequent years a person uh, in a particular year receives an increase in salary equal to $2,000 and this will be maintained in the subsequent years. Now if I use specify a static relationship between Y and X and suppose that uh, MBC is equal to 0.8 suppose then the model is yt is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 xt plus ut this is equal to beta 1 plus 0.8 xt plus ut what is assumed here is whenever there is an increase in income equal to 2000 his consumption expenditure automatically increases by 1800 sorry 1600 as MBC is assumed it to be 0.8 but now suppose that the consumer plans his consumption expenditure differently that is in the first year his consumption increases by 800 in the second year it increases by 600 in the third year it increases by 400 that is 1800 that is the increase in income is maintained and his consumption expenditure increases like this it reaches 1800 let it be 0.9 1800 in a period of three years if this is how consumption behave when there is an increase in income this behavior cannot be represented by this equation let us see how we represent this equation to represent this equation we write it as yt is equal to alpha plus in the first year it is 800 out of 2000 0.4 xt plus 0.3 x t minus 1 plus 0.2 x t minus 2 plus u t and in a period of 3 years mbc become 0.9 initially mbc is 0.4 if the increase in income is maintained maintained after a period of 3 years our consumer will reach a level of consumption equal to 1800 if this is the behavioral pattern of the consumer then you cannot specify this behavioral pattern using a static model you have to go for dynamic econometric model by introducing lagged values of explanatory variables or introducing lagged values of explanatory variables is a method used for making the model dynamic we will discuss autoregressive models later as we will show later autoregressive models and distributed lag models are one and the same thing one can be generated from the other anyway that we will see later so if uh, the consumption expenditure increases the consumer will increase his consumption in a period of say three years and in this model beta zero uh, let me write it as alpha plus beta zero xt plus beta one xt minus one plus beta two xt minus two plus ut now beta zero is known as the impact multiplier impact multiplier and this beta 1 and beta 2 are known as interim multipliers multipliers and beta 0 beta 1 plus beta 2 is known as the impact multiplier interim multiplier total multiplier 
or the distributor log multiplier. So beta zero is the short run or impact multiplier. Beta one and beta two are known as the interim or intermediate multipliers. Beta one, beta zero, beta one, and beta two are known as that is the sum is known as the long run or total distributor log multiplier. That is generalizing this sigma beta i i is equal to zero to k beta zero plus beta one plus etc. Beta k is the total distributor log multiplier. Impact multiplier, interim multipliers, and total. So in impact multiplier in this example is 0.4. Interim multipliers are 0.3. 0.2 etc. Total multiplier is 0.9. So if uh, we believe that there is, if uh, we, we believe that there is uh, um, such a dependence on past values or future values, both are one and the same thing that we will discuss in the next class, then we have to specify the model by using the lagged values of dependent variables that will make the model dynamic that will make the model dynamic this is one specific example uh, there are a lot of examples you can cite from economic theory the link between oh, what to say money and prices as I told you then the lag between R and D expenditure and productivity. As I told you, medicine for Corona and its appearance in the market, accelerator model of investment and demand for durables and so many other models you have studied in microeconomics. So the point is time or lag is very important in economics. This is because in economics, variables will not adjust quickly. It will take time and it is known as lag. So specification of the lag is important. Now the question is how many lags to be specified? How to estimate such models? Such things will be considered later. So the point here is if we introduce lagged values of independent variables it is distributed lag model. Distributed lag because the effect of a given cause is distributed over a long period of time. Distributed in this case over a period of three years. Auto regressive means yt is regressed on yt minus 1, yt minus 2 etc. Both are examples of dynamic econometric models. Unlike the models we have studied so far in the dynamic modeling, econometric models, we have to specify the lag length. Also we have to uh, think about how to estimate the parameters. If yt minus 1 is an independent variable like yt, yt is stochastic so yt minus 1 is also stochastic, then it is possible that it will be correlated with the error time. Such a considerations will be taken into account. Before that, in the next class we will also consider what are the various ways in which these dynamic models are used. Once more uh, considering a few more examples and then we will explain how to estimate such models. If you read books of econometrics you will see a lot of examples citing the need for dynamic econometric models.